I'm Chef Jasper, and today we are in the kitchen making one of my all-time favorite desserts. I know, you hear me say that for every dish, but seriously, tiramisu. Oh my, come on. I get excited talking about tiramisu. Think about this. The Italians, such great words for each dish. Salt and bocco means to jump in the mouth. Tiramisu means to pick me up. That's what it does with the espresso and the liqueur. Kind of gives you a little boost, you know? The different pasta dishes, if they're not named after a grandmother or a mama or an aunt who passed away, they're named after a saint or they have some history behind them. I love the history of dishes and you're gonna love the history behind tiramisu because you know what? It may not have been invented in Italy. I like to call this tiramisu 101, the basics. And you know what? We're not doing any altered versions with berries or pumpkin or anything else. A basic tiramisu, I may sprinkle some amaretti cookies right on top. That's about it. That's the only difference I make. Maybe a crunchy tiramisu. But let's get started. First of all, we need some mascarpone. Now, mascarpone, this creamy Italian cheese. It's silky. It's buttery. It's sweet, yes, it's, it's like a sweet cream cheese. And if you look on the side in the ingredients, there's no sugar in it. There's a special process and some different ways of preparing tiramisu, some secrets to some cheese makers. Along with that, yes, I don't stretch it by no means. I'm not trying really to save any money, but I put cream cheese in it. Why? Because the cream cheese and the mascarpone together kind of blend well and it kind of makes it a little bit heavier because sometimes the mascarpone could be just a little too creamy once you start messing with the added rum or the Kahlua because that's what I put in mine. Yes, we'll talk about that. And the coffee. That's another, uh, another few minutes here. But let's get started. We need to make first some whipped cream. Plain whipped cream, heavy whipped cream. But with this, we don't want any sugar or anything else in here. Okay, let's get started. Put it along low. You could do it by hand or you could just do it in the mixer. It should just take a, maybe a minute and a half or so and you'll have your whipped cream. And we finished with some nice soft peaks. Now we have our whipped cream, our mascarpone and cream cheese mixture. Set this right here. I'm gonna add a couple of collard eggs. Collard eggs, okay. So they've been sitting in some boiling water for about, I'd say maybe four or five minutes. But I boiled the water and then I just set aside. I didn't leave it on the stove boiling. So we're not eating raw eggs. Along with this, our powdered sugar, some vanilla, Lots of flavor there. And then my extra touches. Okay, I love rum, so we'll put some rum in there. Dark rum, golden rum, light rum. About an ounce, maybe a little more. Kahlua. A lot of Italians don't put Kahlua in this, but oh boy, it gives it such great flavor. And we're gonna put some in our coffee mixture also. That's where I think you pick up so much more flavor. Hey, come on, what are we calling this? Tiramisu 101. Now, to finish this, let's get our whipped cream. Everything is together. And at this point, crack your eggs and start folding everything together. I've already sifted the powdered sugar, so we don't have to worry about any lumps or anything like that. I don't want to put this back on a mixer. I want to do it by hand. Why? Well, first of all, because that's the way my mama taught me how to make it. And it's not a recipe that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Even though some Italians will claim that it was invented in Italy, the mascarpone was really not around in the 18th uh, century, in the early 19th century, 20th century. So it didn't come around until like the 40s and 50s and 60s. There's a restaurateur in Baltimore, Maryland, who claims he produced the first tiramisu and gave it its name. Now, a lot of people say, well, Cosmo de' Medici enjoyed it 
over a century and a half ago in Italy. In Turin, uh, in the region of Piemonte, they claim that they made this dish. Well, they probably did. They didn't call it tiramisu. They used some type of a cheese, perhaps a ricotta cheese, because the Sicilians kind of didn't invade Turin. But a lot of Sicilians fled to Turin to move, and they brought some of their dishes and ingredients, and they probably brought a ricotta. So, and I've had this with ricotta cheese. It's pretty good. It's just not as, not as rich and creamy. All right. Now we're getting our mixture all together. If you think it's too lumpy, then go ahead and put the, um, the mixer on there. It's not going to hurt it. I see some lumps, and so I'm glad this kind of happened. So you can do the same thing at home. Let's go ahead and finish it very, very quickly. Okay, I didn't want to put this too long with the mixer because I whipped that cream and I wanted it kind of heavier to fold everything in there. But I saw some lumps and I was just a little afraid with that. Let's give it a taste. Oh, come on. Let's see if it's, it'll hold up to my, my taste test and my spoon test. Spoon test? Yes, there's a spoon test. Watch this. That's my spoon test. Pretty good, huh? It's not dripping. It's good enough to put into our, uh, our glass bowl now. Okay, let's taste this. Mmm, so delicious. The hint of coffee already in this dish, just perfect. All right, let's set this aside. And now, this is when we call the tiramisu part. This is, this is what, it, what it's all about, the pick-me-up. We have some Kahlua, which I've already put in there, and I brewed some espresso this morning. You don't have to have an espresso machine. Of course, you can use a French press, boil some coffee, you don't have to go out and, you know, buy something really, really expensive. But I do like the, uh, the heavy, heavy, dark, dark, rich, dark, long roasted espresso. Because you know what? The cookies are going to soak this up, so you want a lot of flavor. All right. There we go. And we have these beautiful lady fingers, Savayarde, you can get in your store. And let's start the process. We're going to build. That's right. We're going to layer. Okay, this is it. And watch this little trick here in just a second. You just dunk just for a second anyway. But watch what happens. Okay, at the bottom here, they're so soft. Now look at this. I kind of press down and they kind of mold to the bowl. Look at that. They're soft. And now... We start building on the sides. Just perfect. It's like we almost measured for this ahead of time, but it really worked out well in this glass bowl. And I'll put a few more on the bottom. And we just continue this until you finish the whole bowl. Okay. All right, we're just finishing up the sides here. Put the last couple in there and They'll adjust, put them right in there like that. And watch, they become soft as you push them down because they're soaked with that espresso. Now we have a beautiful bowl here. It looks almost like a design there. Now we get our filling. Oh boy, here we go. Halfway up. And we're gonna do another layer. And I'm not really worried about this layer being perfect so if i have some broken ones i'll use the broken ones up and kind of sometimes you need the broken ones to kind of fit in there look at that there's another broken one it'll probably fit perfectly yes it does last a little bit of coffee and kalua mixture soak those up i got another broken one that's what i need here fits right in there and then one more little broken one will fit on the other side. Put that right there. Now, some people, and I kind of like this idea, like to put the cocoa in the middle also in that layer. Don't be shy with that cocoa. And if you want to, my version, 
I get these cookies and I start crumbling them in the middle also. So now you have a little bite to them. You have the soft cookie and you have the hard cookie. The hard cookie is your base and it kind of brings everything together again. What are we doing? I say it all the time in my, uh, in my classes, in my teachings, we're building layers, layers of flavor. It's going to help pick me up, I'll tell you that. You know, I don't understand why we don't start the day with this instead of a dessert because it's coffee. And, you know, I mean, we, I know we all drink coffee after dinner and this and that. I don't. And I like to drink my coffee in the morning. So, wow, this could be like the next big breakfast treat. Let's talk about it. Seriously. Let's think about it at least, okay? And at this point, we're going to put more filling right on top, just like that. And we'll put some more cookies, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with these cookies, okay? I'm going to lay them on here, just like that. Okay, kind of let them sit in there a little bit. This is when we get in trouble. <laughs> Put your thumb on top of that. Okay, instead of coffee soaking, we're soaking it with a little bit of the Kahlua. That's it. Just a little drizzle. And at this point, let's finish with some cocoa. And back to my story. Well, this gentleman in Baltimore, uh, he wasn't too happy. And he's gone to great lengths with uh, TV shows and his teaching. And you Google it, you'll find out that he claims that his restaurant in Baltimore invented the tiramisu. So where did it come from? Well, you know what? We really don't know exactly. We can't prove anything, but I will tell you. It's become one of my favorite dishes to enjoy. Look at this, a pitcher. It looks like a pitcher. And now we crumble some more of these crunchy amaretti cookies right on top. And you have a dessert fit for a king. Well, Cosmo de Medici wasn't a king, but it was a dessert fit for him. And of course, your guests are gonna just love it. Serve it with a dollop of whipped cream, a nice little espresso because heh, we don't drink cappuccino after 11 o'clock in Italy. That's just the rules. We got to stay by the rules. But hey, leftovers, oh my gosh, the longer this sits, a couple of days, it is still great. And there we go. Crunchy tiramisu. Tiramisu 101. I showed you the basics. I gave you eh, a little bit of an alternate recipe with the crispy amarettis but you know now how to make Italy's most famous dessert since about 1980. That's when it became very, very popular. Tiramisu, whether it's for dessert, breakfast, or just a snack, you'll find it in coffee shops, pastry shops throughout Italy, and now you can make it at home. It's that easy. This is something I would not only be proud to present at my restaurant, but also to my friends and family. Tiramisu, time to pick me up. Brought to you by Hen House Markets.